What's up, everybody? Just wanted to do a video, go over a couple more specific things on a Chevy Nomad, and also I'll show you what I've been doing on my 57 Chevy Nomad project car. Finally got the roof done, and here we are again, 90 plus degree heat, and I'm out in the sun, sanding on the roof. So it's been another long day, but that that part of it's done. So, main reason I wanted to post a video, not only to show the 57 Chevy Nomad progress, because I know a lot of you guys are following along, and I, I appreciate that. And also, I've gotten some shout-outs from a couple of real cool guys, and I appreciate that as well. But, I wanted to go over the 1955 Chevy Nomad, because it's got a lot of unique stuff. It was kind of like what started it all. Originally, it started as a concept car on a 1954 Chevy Corvette where they had grafted the roof. And I'm sure you've probably seen some of them, the uh, Autorama cars. Back in the 50s, they was real big on concept cars and things like that. So that's where it kind of morphed from as a 54 Chevy Corvette. And then it actually ended up the passenger car, the 55 Chevy, that was your first 55 Nomad, that was your first Nomad, and it has a lot of stuff that's unique just to the 55 Nomad, it's the most unique out of all of them, and in 56, they become a lot more common with the rest of the passenger cars, minus the roof, the Nomad roof and things like that, uh, and then 57 was real common to 57, like a two-door Bel Air things like that as far as the side trim. So, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that was different about them. Well, let's check it out. There's the, the convertible, the rag top. I got the top on it and I just left that car sitting there. It's taking a break on it totally, 100%. I'll jump back on it, but I just needed some new meat, needed something different to work on. But you can see the front fender chrome, front door chrome, and the front eyebrows. That's 1955 Chevy Nomad only. You wouldn't have found that on any other car. That was just strictly a 1955 Chevy Nomad. And it's extremely hard to come by nowadays. A lot of it got beat up. A lot of it got either damaged or they're notorious for the pins breaking off the back of them. And then you got to put screws in them to hold them on or find somebody that knows how to work pop metal. It's a real early form of aluminum. And then another thing you can look at is the back wheel wells. They was common to a 1955 Chevy Nomad only. And I know a lot of you guys know this, but if you're new to the classic car hobby, I want to embrace the younger generation because I'm I'm in my early 40s, and I know a lot of people that are older than me, a lot of people that are close to my same age. But you know, we all as a group got to do something to to bring the younger generation into these cars because what's going to happen once we're gone? So that's kind of the reason why I, I go over these cars. And everybody is like, oh man, cool wagon. Like, eh. Yeah. Visually, it's a wagon, but it's way more than that. It's it's more of a custom car. I call it a Nomad. I don't call it a wagon. It's an, it's a 55 Nomad. It's, to me, these cars are not wagons. They're 55 and 57 Nomads. But there's the infamous eyebrows. 1955 Chevy Nomad only. And then the wheel wells, because like I said, it started first started life as a concept car on a 54 Corvette, and they got the same size wheel wells, front and back. That's why a 55 Nomad and 55 Nomad only has them wheel wells. And then that's 55 Nomad only door panels, and it's got the waffle panel at the bottom. You're not going to find this on any other car. The early 50s Corvettes had something similar to this, and I think that's where GM stole their design. This is strictly 
1955 Chevy Nomad only. And then the seat, I mean, that was kind of wore out, but the seat would match it. And then even the back door panels, they, this is all unique to a 55 Chevy Nomad. And this one's even got a rare padded dash in it. So, if you're if you're dealing with a Nomad, each one of them's got their own different little unique things. And on a 56 Chevy Nomad, the only outside trim that's different would be right here. The paint divider goes backwards. And on a 56 Nomad, it goes backwards, and them are, them are impossible to find. I call them dog legs. They're a 56 Chevy Nomad paint divider. But other than that, all the trim's common on a 56 Chevy on the outside as far as a Nomad or a two-door hardtop. And you can see that one right there. It's got more of the same. The big wheel wells, the front fender chrome. That car right there is an early built car. That's number 408. And I know I already did a video before, but you can kind of see the reflection against the fence. That's got factory green glass and it, easy eye glass. It was an original red and white car. So the 55 Nomad is by far the most unique. And it's near and dear to my heart because 55 is my favorite. I like the 56 and 57, but 55 is, is definitely the sweet spot for me. So then we get to the 57. And you can see... The roof's all done and I even went through and started cutting down that quarter panel and I added all this window trim around the sides of it. So that's basically, I got to find some screws. They take a little bit of a weird thickness of the screw and then they're fine thread also to keep that trim on there so it's just kind of dummied up. But you can see how much of a difference it makes. This side has no trim around the windows. But that top was mint. I only found one little, little tiny dent right above the driver's side door. No rust, nothing else. So that's what it looks like with all the window trim ready for the windows. And then I wanted to show you guys this stuff right here. Let me zoom back a little bit. That's all the pieces you'll need to go, this is for the left side, to go around your windows. Even on your curved glass and your slider glass, they take their own little strip of chrome and then it's got a rubber seal that kinda is supposed to keep air out. And then there's your little latch that latches this. Cause, cause this window right here slides back, it slides forward and back. And then here's your back c-pillar piece them are them are really hard to find for some reason i don't know if nobody saved them off back you know years ago but them, them c-pillar pieces are probably 300 for a set this trim right here is it's kind of expensive but it's not this is one of the more cheaper things on a nomad let me step back you can kind of see the vision i'm going for for the with this car just to get the trim on it and just kind of, I think the body's going to be pretty decent once I get it, once I get it sanded down. I'm going to do very little body work to it. I just want to sand it down and um, get it all, get all the pieces on it so it's complete. And then I can evaluate things from there. And this little stupid thing right here, I, I thought I had it probably somewhere. So I need that piece. This piece, I had that one. But the roof's all done. So that's all looking good. And later on this week, I'll start stripping this quarter and get all that window trim in it. And then this car right here, that since this is an early built car, if you guys look at some of my other videos, this piece right here, you look at it. It's like a brass. It was chromed because I think the story was these pieces right here was it was kinking when they was trying to bend them for some reason and I got one spare off another 55 Chevy Nomad that I'm gonna show you that's the 55 mark in his territory original power steering pump leaking but this right here 
if we look at it, this is what I was talking about. You can see that's not a regular stainless steel piece. You can see all the little imperfections in it. And if you look at the bolts, the bolt holes, see how it's like either copper or brass. I mean, it's plenty strong enough, but only the early Nomads had this piece. And I've seen a lot of them that only had, this is a right-hand side. I've seen a lot of them that's only had the right-hand side. And these pieces right here that's all wrapped up, they go to the 57. They're, that's the, these pieces, the drip rails. That's another expensive piece. And you see this one? That's just smooth stainless steel. But this is a, this is like in the 6500 range, this, this Chevy Nomad. These cars are really limited production cars. If you think about like a regular 210 wagon or something like that, they probably made, you know, at least a hundred thousand of them. And like a, like a 55 two door hard top, I, I want to think they made 150,000 of them or something like this. And this car right here, this 55 Nomad, depending on what book you read, it says they either made 8,500 or 8,800 of them. So, yeah, that seems like a lot, but nowadays I, I doubt there's probably 1,500 of them left. And then this one right here, some books said a 57 Chevy Nomad, they made 6,500 of them. And then some books say 6,300. And that one's like body number 1,400 or something. I think it was made in February of 57. And even the convertibles there, that's another rare car. They made, I want to think they made 42,000 of them in 55. And once again, if you compare them to like a, 50, a 55 four-door Bel Air sedan, I think they made 200,000 of the 55 four-door sedans. So you start off with a 55 convertible that they only made 42,000 of them. How many real original convertibles could be left in the world? They're the only car that was ever built without a top. After five or six years, that top got holes in it, started rusting the floors. The rest was history. So... There's the progress on that. You guys can kind of see the vision I'm, I'm, I'm going with there. I just want to clean it up, get the trim on it, and start seeing, you know, how the body looks. Believe me, this 57 is actually in better shape than my 55 convertible when I started. I got way more parts for the 57 Nomad. That car right there, when I got it, it didn't, man, I had to search high and low for all them parts. Uh, but I just want to give a shout out to couple new people that I started following and started talking to real real nice guys BW's BW's garage he's got a killer 55 gasser and then he he sent me he told me to check out uh, poor possum garage another killer uh, 55 Chevy gasser he's a real cool guy from the south and everybody knows Ironhead garage Mike that's another killer guy. Well, no, not Mike. Chris. Sorry about that. Mike, I was thinking about Mike. Uh, Desert Rat 2000. Another one of my guys. If I got you guys' names confused, you know I mean the best. One last thing. If you guys ever see that, that Greenhorn Hillbilly Gasser from the Southeast Gasser Association, that guy doesn't live too far from me. And I didn't recognize it at first, but this nose, when I first got this car, I had to buy a nose. This nose, minus the hood, is uh, the factory nose off of that Greenhorn Hillbilly 55 two-door sedan gasser. This nose used to flip up on this convertible, and I took all that stuff off and put all the stock stuff back on it. But it was all, that, that Greenhorn uh, 55, that was one solid car. I think it was from New Mexico or something. And this front end is rust free on this car. But now I'm rambling. So, once again, Ironhead, check him out. BW's Garage, check him out. Poor Possum's Garage, check him out. Deseret, Deseret 2000, check him out, Mike. And a lot of people tell me to check out DD Speed Shop. Man, we all know about DD Speed Shop. Dan does killer work. 
we all know about him. So I appreciate everybody that subscribed. And I'm starting to find myself in a real cool community of, of people that's got the same interest as me. And that, that means a lot to me. It's real enjoyable. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next video.